using rates of change to create a graphical model. What we're looking at here is how we're going to use what we've looked at so far. For example, speed. Speed is the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Note that speed doesn't have a sign attached to it, so we put an absolute value to indicate speed can be uh, is always positive, and the value of speed just describes the change in displacement over the change in time. Another way of the formula is to look at it as delta D over delta T with the absolute value signs. Now, the slope of the secant represents the average speed on the interval. Note that there are absolute signs here. The slope of the secant, the absolute sign of the slope of the secant, this represents the average speed. All right, so what do you think would represent the instantaneous speed? Hopefully you're thinking that the slope of the tangent, the absolute of it, represents the instantaneous speed at a specific point. Knowing this, let's look further. Looking at these uh, graphs here, I'm going to just discuss this a little bit. Looking here, we can see that this is an increasing graph. But specifically, let's discuss this. An increasing line indicates that the displacement increases as time increases. So what can we say about the speed here? Okay, the speed is constant because if you look at it, the rate of change on this line is the same. So even though the displacement is increasing and time is increasing, the speed here we would say is constant because the slope of this line is constant throughout. The same can be said for this one. Even though it's decreasing, so what that means is as time increases, the displacement decreases, what we're actually looking at here is that the speed here is constant because the slope of this line is the same. When we have a horizontal line, one would think that the speed is constant here. Actually, the speed is zero. It is zero because the displacement, there is no displacement over a set period of time. So a horizontal line means that there's going to be no displacement over a set period of time, which means zero speed. So, note, noting that about speed, so here speed is constant, here speed is constant, and here speed is zero. So let's look at this example over here. Looking at the slopes of these tangent lines created here on this curve, what can you tell me about the speed of this particular object? Well, if you look at the slope, it starts horizontal and it starts to get slanted. The steeper and steeper the line gets, the greater the slope. So here what's happening is speed is increasing. The speed is increasing because the slope is increasing on this curve, the slope of the tangent. Remember, slope of the tangent is the instantaneous speed. Looking over here at this one, notice all of these lines. What's happening to the tangent line? Well, it's becoming more and more horizontal. It means that the slopes of these tangents is becoming closer and closer to zero, so it's going down. And because of that, this will say that the speed is decreasing because the slopes of the tangent is going downwards. Let's look over here. What's happening here? Now, these two functions were originally increasing, but their speeds were different. The same can be said here. These two functions are decreasing, but their speeds are doing something else. Here, the, the tangent lines are getting slower, closer and closer to zero. So, what's happening here is that the speed is decreasing as we get uh, further and further along in time. Over here, the slopes of the tangent lines are getting larger and larger. So, what you have here is the speed is increasing because the slopes are getting larger and larger because the lines are getting steeper and steeper. So remember these are all tangent lines that we're looking at. So why do we have these numbered? Well, if I was to ask the following question, what would, for example, if I asked to say, all right, I need an increasing function where the speed is decreasing, and that would be here. 
This is an increasing function where the speed is decreasing. Which graphs show the speed increasing? Increasing would be here because the slopes are getting steeper and steeper and here. This is an increasing function with speed increasing. This is a decreasing function with sp speed decreasing. Another way to look at it is displacement could be implied whether you're filling up something or emptying something. So in these objects, what's happening here is that the object here, the, it is slowly being filled up, okay? And what's happening is the displacement, it's speeding up. The filling is speeding up towards as it gets more and more. All right, let's look at some other examples. Ready? Okay, so what we're looking at here is there are twins taking testing a motion sensor. Twin A stands 0 0.6 meters in front of the sensor and walks from it at a constant rate for 6 seconds. Next, A walks 0.5 meters towards, so 0.6 meters from the sensor, then walks 2 meters away from it at a constant rate for 6 seconds. Next, A walks 0.5 meters towards the sensor for 3 seconds and again at a constant rate and then waits there for 5 seconds. Draw a distance versus time graph for A's walk. So we're going to look at the graph now. So here's our scale going across. So we have distance and we have time and we need to plot the first dot. The first dot is at 0 0.6 meters. What we now need to do is go 6 seconds across the horizontal and then 2 meters from where you started. So 0 0.6 meters, you're moving 2 meters away so that you'll hit 2.6. Now that we know that, that's what this value is here. Let's just move back a little bit. So this here is our 2.6 because we've moved 2 meters away. The next stop is to uh, walk 0.5 meters towards the sensor for 3 seconds. So we're moving in a downwards direction. And that's where we got this line. So we moved 0.5 meters for three seconds. And then what the person does is waits five seconds. So waits means that this line should be a horizontal line. Okay, and a horizontal line meaning there's no change in distance, but definitely change in time. All right, let's look at part B. Part B, what is the average rate of change in the first six seconds? So well, how do we do that? Well, average rate of change is equal to, you take the points. First, I'm going to take the 6 second point, so that means at 2.6 seconds, it was 2.6, that's where these values came from, and at 0 seconds, it's 0.6. Subtract them, and you end up getting 2 over 6, which is 1 third. How do we read this? It could be 1 third of a meter per second. It could be one meter for every three seconds. It could be read as 0 0.33 meters per second. All three of those answers are correct. Okay? All three of these answers are correct. And the reason why they're correct is how we're implying the units. All right, let's look on to part C now. What does part C say? What are the instantaneous rates of change at t equals 3 seconds, t equals 7 seconds, and t equals 11 seconds. Well, looking here, this is a line. What do we know about a line? Well, that the slope of this line is the same. The slope of a line is the rate of change of that line. We had a secant rate of change, so the average rate of change, which was the secant line, and now we want the instantaneous rate of change. What can you tell me about the instantaneous rate of change and the average rate of change on a line? Hopefully, you're thinking the same thing that I am, and that is that they have the same values. So you should have already figured out that at 3 seconds, it has to be 0 0.333 meters per second or any of the other options. Okay? Next. At 7 seconds, how do we find that out? Well, folks, we got to do the instantaneous rate of change formula. So here we go. We subtract them, and we get 0 
five meters for every three seconds. What does that mean? Mathematically, it means one-sixth of a meter per second. And decimal-wise, that's negative 0 0.1667 meters per second. Okay, then we'll just add the meters per second, just so that you have that. And the last one, 11 seconds. Hopefully, you're thinking, okay, at 11 seconds, if we match over here along the graph, at 11 seconds, we're on the horizontal line. Obviously, from before, we remember that a horizontal line means that there must be zero slope. So you're, tra you're at rest. And when you're at rest, you're traveling no meters per second. So the average instantaneous rate of change, sorry, is zero meters per second. One more. Let's go on to the last part. The last part says the following. Draw a speed versus time graph. So I gave you a scale here where you have the speed and you have, which is meters per second, and you have the time, which is in seconds. What you need to do is to be able to graph it. Now remember, it was three lines in the previous graph. Okay, three lines in the previous graph. What were the three lines? The first line had a speed of one third. So given a scale, and this is kind of a funky scale, you need to figure out what one third is. And this is the way you're going to look at it. There are six ticks to get to half a meter per second. How much is it to get to a whole meter per second? You should figure out that it's 12 ticks. What's one third of this? One third will be at the fourth tick. Now what do these represent? This first one over here is the constant speed at which, it tr at which the twin traveled for all of six seconds. So this was the constant speed of the very first line. The next one represents the constant speed of the next part, which was one-sixth. One-sixth is half of that distance, so it's one-sixth over here. And this is the walking towards, okay? The speed, don't forget, is always positive. So it's traveling 0.1667 meters per second. And then finally, the last one, the rest one, was zero meters per second. So, that's everything there, folks. That's the end of this unit. Good luck in the test. Bye.